Um, what are you guys drinking? Uh, we are drinking Jameson. Jameson. Oh, yay. At least somebody is. <laughs> A little bit of Jameson on the rocks over here. That's what we do mm-hmm. over here. We're we're um, we're Jameson enthusiasts. Yeah. Good. And we were hoping to meet Jamie. No. We've done our research, <laughs> uh, but that's okay. That's okay. If uh, I come to New York, which I might, because my friend's out there, uh, I, I'll I'll skip my Adderall prescription that's supposed to take daily, <laughs> and I'll just be insanely all over the place and weird, and then we'll drink Jameson. Love it. So if you have patience, like a plan. patience to deal with me when I can't focus on anything, then cool. <laughs> oh no, no, we can. We'll we'll just leave. <laughs> he deals with me all the time. So I do. It's, yeah, okay. it's fine. I and I just go. Same shit. Like, just this leave. is my house, and I just I'll leave. I'll lock just the leave. door. Mm-hmm. Just make sure yeah. he doesn't break anything. Leave it's me fine. In the studio. Make it. Make it is my podcast. Make it. Make it. Make it is my. Podcast. Today's hey. episode. Oh my goodness! Of Bacon is my podcast is brought to you, me, and you, and you, and everyone listening. By Wild Bill Sodas, drinkwildbills.com, grillyourassoff.com. It's almost grilling season, so definitely get on that. And poddex.com, any of those, you can use the promo code BACON to get 10% off your entire order. What else we got? Oh, we've got Manscaped. Manscaped.com. Use the promo code BACONPOD on any of your purchases, whether it's the Crop Mop, which mm, is the I ball. I love the Crop Mop. I love those. Whether it's the Crop Reviver, which also is use the little spray. Yeah. While it, daily. It, I use that daily. Yeah, I do too. Uh, the um, I like the spray uh, moisturizer. Yeah, the moisturizer is pretty great. I, I have tattoos. Have it here. If you have great. tattoos, it's really good moisturizer to spray on. It's light. It's it's not gonna like uh, make you feel greasy or anything like that. Right. I mean, we're just talking about the 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 toiletry stuff, but shit. N- not to mention the 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 lawnmower. Keep your balls clean. The lawnmower 4.0. Yeah. Is uh is legit. Um, I had 3.0. There's nothing switch over the 4.0 because they as hooked us up. And as a shorn scrotum, Lord, it is it is sweet. So use that promo code Bacon Pod. You get your 20 percent off. You get your free shipping. That's 10 percent for each ball. Yeah, 10 percent for each ball. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Welcome to Bacon Smart Podcast. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Thanks for joining us once again. Thanks for hanging out with us. As always, we want to thank all of our listeners. You guys are awesome. You guys are the best. Thank you, especially to you that are on our Patreon, who are listening to this episode commercial-free and a little bit early. Uh, thank you guys for supporting the show. You guys help us keep the lights on and help yes. us keep it free. That is super important. Um, how was your week, man? What would you do? You had a I, big week. I, you know what my biggest takeaway is? What's that? I've discovered my superpower. Ooh, what's your superpower? Picking the wrong lines to check out at. <laughs> that's a, that's an unfortunate superpower. I, I, I don't know what it is. I yeah. don't know how I did it. Maybe I was, maybe I was. Born with it? Maybe hit it's with, Maybelline. No, I, I, no, I think, I think I was hit by a cart. At some point, <laughs> at a young age, at, at at a young age, right, and I just didn't know what to do with it. Okay, and now I am able to pick the wrong lane every single time. Wow! It doesn't matter what store either. Impressive. Uh, Target, it's awful. <laughs> um, Has anyone ever BJ's, had a line in Target awful. that wasn't awful? BJ's, it's awful. Um, okay. Stop and shop. It's awful. I always find the person who didn't renew their their subscription mm. to BJ's. Okay. I've always got the person that has the uh, the double coupon for the meat, mm. and the computer doesn't realize right. it. Doesn't and, doesn't and recognize they go, it. They go. I'm not leaving until I get my seventy five cents. Right. Do you ever offer to give them 75 cents? Because I have done that. 
I've never done that before because I've offered a dollar to somebody. I've realized I've been like, here, take this dollar and leave. I I, I have realized that that it's just it's it's my fate. It's okay. my superpower. So I I'm gonna help you right now. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna help you right now. Um, Instacart. Yeah, not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. Could be. Could be. Uh, Instacart, right? I haven't waited in a line at a grocery store for probably two years. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, because one of two things happens. I either say, hey, Annie, what do you need from the grocery store? I'm going to do an Instacart. And she either tells me what she needs, and then we get an Instacart. Or she goes, I'll just go. Don't Instacart. And I'm like, no, no, no. I want to Instacart because I'm not going to go. And she's like, no, I'll go. Either one of those scenarios, I don't have to wait in line. My issue is this. And and, and, and you're a chef. You cook. Yeah. Stuff. Uh, when it comes to veggies and when it comes to things that you have to look and see, you can't just order a piece of meat. A piece of meat, maybe not, but you can go to a butcher and the lines are shorter. I agree. But sometimes the prices better are better. The prices are better and you can, like, just if you you spend a minute looking through the pieces that they have, right? you can either decide, okay, cool, this is a good steal or not. Wednesday, 7 p.m. Right. That's well, my shop. Well... I uh, haven't been able to choose that lately. Just giving you three options that will help. I haven't been able to do that che- recently, yeah. there, Chief. Um, so I'm stuck uh, with the normies, um, and uh, and I'm going to continue to decide that uh, my superpower is picking the wrong checkout line. Instacart will also and, allow you to. You can say, uh, send me a photograph. Of the, of the meats before you choose them and you can pick the one you want mm-hmm. well that certainly is a game changer yes just saying for those of you out there that's, that, that's now huge. it costs a little more it does cost a little more but you know what what's your sanity worth mine is definitely worth that that uh, upcharge mm. <laughs> that delivery fee Interesting. Uh, it is for me because I hate lines and I hate I, people I've, I've lost my sanity a long time ago yeah. But uh, that being said, speaking of hating long lines and speaking of hating people, we have a guest today that is not a fan of people being amongst them, but loves being in front of them, much like, much like us. Much like us, uh, we have. She is an actor. Yes, she a is model. A, co- a, comedian. a comedian. She is a model. She is a uh, content creator. Content creator. She's a she's, hustler. Yeah, she she's really awesome. Has a really cool story. You may have we seen have, her yeah. on Reno 911, True Blood, Wedding Crashers, The Man Show. Yeah, she was a juggy. Ziggy zaggy, oi oi oi. Uh, you may have seen her on any one of those things, and you can see her coming up if you go see live stand up comedy. She's going to be at the Rainbow Room coming up, and uh, some other venues in LA, which we talk about. Yes, Miss Rachel Sterling. Yes. Uh, super cool interview. Yeah. Um, really, really cool. And she's real down to earth. She gets real with us. Um, a lot I mean, of real. A lot the, of real in there. A lot of real, lot of real in, in there. there. It, I think it's really cool that, that we... Um, I feel like a lot of our guests come in with like a certain wall. Mm-hmm. And then we, we, we do the seven questions, uh, obviously. And, uh, like, a little peek behind the curtain. Guys, we do seven questions. To break we, that wall. We do it to break that wall. <laughs> That's the whole like, point. Like, seven questions. We've never met most of these people before. Yeah. We, I mean, some of them we, we, we know. Like, some of our friends and stuff. Some are. But, but most, like, yeah. For the most, most case, them, you're hearing them uh, maybe three minutes after we've met them. Right. Because so so it's one of those things. We run where them through like, how the show right. works and then we start. Hey, how are you? Good. Cool. This is how we work the show. Yep. Seven questions. <laughs> and and that's how we meet people. And uh yeah, she, guard down. Um 
for all those aspiring actors and actresses and and Hollywood living. She's a uh, hustler. Be a hustler. You got you got to listen to this show. Yeah, she got the right attitude and she works, man. Hard. Yeah. yeah. For sure. So um let's without further ado, let's just go into it. Yeah, no more ado. No what? Uh, no ado. Fuck the ado. Indeed. Now. I didn't even want it. What? All right, guys, we're going to take a quick time out. Uh, we want to tell you all about our awesome sponsor, Manscaped. Manscaped.com. Uh, we've been telling you about them since the beginning of the year. We've been users for years. Uh, but now they've put out the new Ultra Premium Collection. And what the Ultra Premium Collection includes is a two-in-one shampoo conditioner, a body wash, a hydrating body spray, deodorant, and lip balm. And uh, what you do is you go to the pro, uh, to the shopping cart. Yep. You put all your things in there. Yep. And when you're done, you use the promo code BACONPOD and you get 20% off and free shipping. I'm going to stop for one second, and I'm just going to let you guys know that I've actually been using this stuff for the last two weeks. I got my order two weeks ago, and I've been using it every day. And so I'm just going to give you a super fast review. The shampoo conditioner is awesome. My hair feels great. It doesn't feel dry. It's not loaded down. It's not weighted down. And it, it actually feels really good. The body wash is awesome. It lathers up really great. I use a very little bit of it. I'm kind of like a uh, sponge guy, so I'll put it on the sponge, loofah, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and it's awesome. The, uh, the surprise for me has been the uh, the body spray. Mm -hmm. It's really awesome. I never used anything like that before. I got it and I was like, ah, what's this going to do? I'll tell you what, as a person with tattoos, man, my arms feel dry every now and then. And sometimes for you of you that have tattoos, you understand that like when it gets dry, you start to feel like a raised up area for where mm -hmm. your tattoo was. This actually, it smells great and it feels great and it keeps you hydrated. My hands, my arms, my tattoos, that's what I've really used it on. I haven't done the whole body or anything like that. Uh, I do use all the other products. I use the crop preserver. I use the foot spray at night. I don't use it during the day because it the might The reviver as well wet. for a midday spritz. Yeah, 100%. Uh, that is the, not included in this, but. The wipes are key. You can all use. All this stuff. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We got the wipes too. Yep. You can use all this stuff um, and you can get 20% off on all of these things. And of course, their flagship Lawnmower 4.0, which I was skeptical. I had the 3.0. Mm -hmm. They gave us a 4.0. I was like, how much better could it be? It's better. It's way better. I've nicked my sack on the 3.0. And I've nicked my sack zero times on the four point. Right. So go ahead, go to manscaped.com, use the promo code BACONPOD, get 20% off, get free shipping, and support a really awesome brand that we believe yeah. in and support the show a little bit. It's really good, guys. I don't care. If it's not good, I'd tell you because I don't care. Right. So it doesn't matter to me. But honestly, like, I'd use this stuff whether we had a discount or not. And I use our promo discount because that's what we have. <laughs> so have the same discount that we do. Indeed. And go over to manscaped.com and use Bacon Pod as your discount. Hello, friends. This is Daryl from The Ansible, and you are consuming Bacon Is My Podcast. <laughs> I hate those right. animals. Bring us in. Do your, do your, uh, your sultry radio voice. Your I'm not going to do that. It's so good. Is it? I love when you do it. You love when I do it. I do. What's up, everybody? That's not my. That's sexy. my sexy. That's not my sexy radio voice. It's kind of. That's my sexy is radio that it? voice. That's it. You know what? I can tell. You can tell. I can tell when you do it. Yeah. You it doesn't. It. it doesn't impress anybody. You Welcome to Bacon's my podcast. Uh, today we are joined by an actress, by mm -hmm. a comedian, by a model, by a, a an all around entertainment. Uh, uh, help me out here. You're doing great. Oh, sweet. Okay, <laughs> a content creator. Yes, an entertainer, uh, comedian, actress, model, all around funny and talented person. Rachel Sterling. Hey guys, how are you doing? <laughs> great. 
Good. We're fantastic. Awesome. Thank you for hanging out with us. Thanks for being here. Thanks for doing what's your bacon and seven questions with us. Uh, everybody got to know a little bit more about you. Yeah. And uh, and now we're just going to talk some shit for a little while. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it's really cool. Like your story is super cool. Um, actually, I, w- I went inside and and my my wife was like, my wife, Jen, she was like, so what's next? And I was like, honestly, it's a really cool uh, like it's it's a comedian. But she has a really cool story leading up to her her actual career in comedy now. Um, you know, she she modeled. Um, she was in a bunch of different movies, TV shows. You know, you were in Wedding Crashers. You were in Reno 911. Uh, you were in music videos. The Man Show. I have, I have like, a couple of seasons on DVD somewhere above this. Oh, wow. Uh, somewhere, yeah. Um, but... Then uh, you decided to join the normies and uh, did like a little bit of like actual normal people work. And then you were like, fuck it. I can't do this, <laughs> which wow. is what we do every day. Right. Oh, so we're, we're yeah. going there. We're going there. Um, and now you're you're a comedian, yeah. which is like super, super cool. So how is that transition like from – <clears throat> that like Hollywood life, that that life that people think about when you're like, okay, I'm an actor. Yeah, actress, what was goal one? That. Was it like yeah, I want to like, be an actress, or I want to be I want to do comedy, and then this is going to lead me in, or was it modeling? Uh, oh, uh, well, goal one was to just keep a roof over my head. So when right. I would uh, model and then do music videos, and then every acting gig I got. They were really just, I never thought about it. I never okay. celebrated any of them. It was a job. And the next day I had to go work, find good, find another job. So um, I think it was just, I, I think that's just how things were back then. We didn't have the distraction of social media and stuff like that. So we just, you just have to constantly be a machine. Right. And I never really thought about anything more than, cool they haven't kicked me out yet they don't because i i honestly i was just like i don't know what i'm doing and i would just go do it and i it was um a lot of i mean it was a lot of stuff i really probably didn't want to do but they were paying my rate so i would do it and it wasn't that hard and then when it comes to all the red carpet stuff and you know parties with tigers on gold leashes and stuff like that. that was, <laughs> right, right. It was fun. I mean, I'm glad I did it. Um, it got like going to high school again and being the popular kid, uh, which I definitely wasn't when I was at actual high school. So that was fun. Um, definitely had a little bit of an asshole phase as everyone does in their twenties. And then I, I mean, there should be a group for when it goes away, but um, right. I think that, I think that it was the best thing. I think the best thing is when you can have a little bit of reality because uh, reality did come in. I was like, I'm going to get, I ran a business for nine years and it's great because I didn't know what I was doing with that either. Uh, Someone just said, here's my my old, she's not, we're not friends anymore, but a friend of mine from college said, here's my business. It's several, this is one in California. I don't, can't be in a million places. You do it. And I was like, cool. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> and it was really like kind of you figure it out. And um, it was horrible in the respect that it's not what I wanted to do with my life. It's not nearly the amount of money I wanted to make for the amount of effort. Mm-hmm. Um, the owners, my friend and her husband are total psychopaths. Uh, but it was very valuable because I got to learn how to deal with other people. And um, that's something I hadn't done because one, I have horrible anxiety. So for the longest time, I think until probably I was early thirties, I had an assistant do everything for me. Like I, I, I I couldn't go to the grocery store because I had anxiety. So I would pay someone an insane amount of money to just like be my buddy and take me to to make sure I got to set on time, live with me and all that stuff so uh just the littlest things that you guys might think is just like common sense Mm -hmm. normal shit like adults do this 
I was really like, whoa, I did it all on myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, but it was really great because uh, now if I had if I had to suck it up and run a business again, I could, but I hope I never have to do that again. Uh, I put a really big commodity on, uh, like it made it a really big deal to be normal. Mm -hmm. And then I went and did that and I was like, fuck this. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> normal. Right. Said, you know, like a kid up until, you know, I've never had a normal job that wasn't in front of a camera. And um, and then I tried it and I was like, well, mm, I mean, I can do it, but I'm really, it was really an unhappy experience for me. Sure. So how did you, how did you juggle like having that kind of anxiety and having that um, even, even probably some uh, like imposter syndrome kind of sounds like some of the stuff yeah. you were saying also. Sure. Yeah. with having a job where you had to be so out and so in front and so open in front of a camera. Um, yeah. Was that, was it like displacement? Like, well, this is, I'm acting and I'm doing this and that's a whole different thing. Probably. Or did you like, did, did they ever intersect where you were just like, how am I even doing this? Um, probably, probably displacement. Um, I don't have, uh, what's it called? Stage fright. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist for me. I don't have stage fright for auditions. Um, I, I've, I've just never had it. I don't, I mean, the closest I might come is maybe when I do this thing in the round. And it's not necessarily stage fright. I just don't want to fuck it up. Right. <laughs> I just don't want to be the worst one. I know I won't be terrible. I won't be terrible. But it's just right. like, you know, there's David Spade and Tiffany Haddish and all these. They get like yeah, names. Yeah. And so I don't think you're like, what was that? Um, I don't want to shit the bed. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to shit the bed. Uh, so uh, I think if I'm being really honest, I think it's uh, I was, you know, like most people, I had a really shitty childhood. And so it was very volatile, volatile and a lot of chaos. And so when you grow up like that, you just kind of have to instinctively, I don't think you don't even know you're doing it. You just read a room. Mm -hmm. And you adjust really quickly because you don't know what the fuck's okay. going to happen and you try and make things smooth. So it's the same thing. I'm just doing what's expected of me. And, you know, every every person, I, every child, whether they're probably abused or not or whatever, gone through whatever situation, you want to be accepted and liked and loved and feel safe. Right. So when you kind of it's kind of making my people pleasing issues work for me. And right. it just worked. And I don't think I was, I was thinking about what I was doing. It was just like, kind of making it happen. It was an instinct yeah. thing. It wasn't like I'm making an actor's choice to do this. I wish <laughs> I, could say I was being that amazing. I wasn't. I right, was just right. like, what do you want me to do? And you'll give me money. Cool. And I think, <laughs> I'll do that. Um, yeah. So, and then uh, I think stand up is the only thing I've ever done where I wasn't chasing money and mm -hmm. I didn't give, a, I don't care about, I don't, I don't care about the fame aspect because I've already had stuff. I've already been in magazines and done all that stuff. Right. And it's not that I wouldn't, wouldn't be nice again, but it's not, it's not important to me. Mm -hmm. um, I've just never really enjoyed the process of anything so much. And uh, if you think about it, like I've, my entire adult life, I've been spitting out what other people want me to say, look like what other people want me to look like, do what they want me to do. And then to keep up, even even just the like quasi celebrity aspect where, where you do get paid to go do an appearance or something like that, you're still a version of what they want. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. right, right. You have, is, you have a you have box that you need to fit in. To yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you, and it's like this is the only thing where it really, I'm. It doesn't matter what they want; they're getting what they fucking get. And right. when I, I think that I mean, we all try things new. There's new things you try on when you're new. And I think I did try to like, well, maybe they want to hear this, or uh, maybe you know. I try the self-deprecating thing that all comics do. It doesn't work for me. It right. really does. Everyone's like, fuck you. So I was just like, <laughs> I was told like, yeah, don't be like belittling or anything like that. Honestly, it works for me. They all laugh. I just, I think it's just, um, you know, my, my, I don't mean to be condescending. It's just my accent. So <laughs> I just don't fight it. 
Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 super fun, and I think that uh, I think that when you're just honest, it works. So when you try yeah. to try to do things that aren't you, it doesn't work. Um, I don't necessarily. It's not that I dress like a, a monk when I go on stage or anything like that. But for the most part, unless it's an all women's show mm-hmm. or uh, I'm doing something like I did a corporate gig for Playboy, I did a corporate a gig for something else, and they were expected, they wanted the girl that did Wedding Crashers. They're paying for the right. actress that now does stand up. So mm-hmm. that then it's like, okay, I won't necessarily, like I'd make a joke that you can't wear your tits on stage. Right. <laughs> privilege not a right and then goes right. but this one girl i'm like yeah she's 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 earned that right um because if you just like it just makes it too much it makes it that much harder because then they're not listening at least right my, yeah i was gonna in say my that opinion, was... they are if you can if some girl can go on stage and you know be half naked and tell great jokes of of substance then good for you it does and not people work. remember the jokes yeah they don't remember shit um, <laughs> but, um yeah so my friend makes fun of me because like you dress like steve jobs only recently i've been I'm like oh wear a dress or something just to like have something different in my reels but um yeah i don't really everyone will uh, expects me to do a lot of stuff on my either sex my sexuality or just sex in general and it's really kind of i don't really do it that much i'll make a joke if it's it's like a, it's a crowd work thing and then or if it's a bar show yeah, you know, bar yeah. Shows get a little dirty but um Let me I read the room. really i don't really like it just because i ex- i think everyone expects it from me and so I don't know. It's like it's like a defiance thing. I don't. I'm like yeah. I'm not gonna give it to you. You're gonna sit here and listen to all my shitty husbands. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> do you do you think that um, getting into comedy after already having like a, a life in Hollywood, a, a, like a career in Hollywood, do you think getting into comedy after that is harder than getting in just just going straight to comedy, like? Okay, I just think I'm kind of funny, and uh, I've got a bunch of dead end jobs, and you know what? Fuck it, I'm just gonna go to a local comedy place and just start doing sets, doing reps. Yeah, did you have to get over anything like, oh, you're only here because? Oh, um, I think other people have to get over it more than me, but yeah. it seems to be other people's problem more than mm-hmm. mine. I do, I do have definitely people, uh, you know that. Ooh, girl, you're the only, only reason you got this. And then there's things I know flat out. I'm like, the only reason I'm on this lineup is because I have credits. I don't, I don't deny that, but right. I do do the work. So, oh yeah, you know, uh, I feel that. Hmm, how can I phrase this? I feel that anyone, whether. Um, I think the only thing the credits help, but it's more of the perspective okay. of all the things I've done because it's it's I mean I'm old. So <laughs> so it's I've had a lot of things where people thought that things were going amazing and it wasn't. I've I've had jobs where I was making a ton of money and had all this uh people that I mean you would think it's a good amazing life, but I was working all the time and I didn't really enjoy it. Um, mm-hmm. I got really into hanging out with socialites for a while. And, you know, I kind of feel like when I stopped, I stopped all that stuff. I kind of, I'm like, yeah, this kind of sucks because now nobody, nobody's pop, nobody paparazzi picturing me. But at the same time, it's like, I got my soul back. Right, <laughs> so right. I think that it's perspective. So a lot of people live a life, but they haven't, don't have any experiences, so mm-hmm. you're the sum of your experiences. And no matter, I when I did start, I was like, I don't think, because, you know, they tell you, you have to be relatable. And I'm like, who the fuck? Am, okay, well, where am I doing stand-up now? I promise someone's going to be relatable. Okay, I'm just going to go, where? Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> not relatable. Most not relate, But apparently I am very relatable. Um, mostly because I say shitty things that other people think, but they come out of my mouth, not theirs, and then they feel better because they didn't have to say it. People enjoy um, that. Yeah. And also, uh, I feel that, you know, being an actor and a model, like, you're constantly 
told no and you're constantly told you're not good enough mm -hmm. all not now because now they have to be nice to everybody but back in when the earth was cooling <laughs> they would tell you to your face you're fat you're too short you're too tall you need to lose weight you need to do this you need to do that you just flat out suck to your face and then they would tell your manager and then your manager would, like get wow. in here and then they would tell you to your face and so Ugh. it i mean I, I the it's it's brutal but i i do remember those things i think i only cried once and it was like right when i first started but after a while it's um it didn't even affect me because i was like okay right, right. this was this was the standard i didn't meet the standard it wasn't anything personal about me they were looking right it's just the job I, I knew what the thing was and either i didn't try hard enough and there's a lot of times i didn't try hard enough or um i just wasn't the girl and mm -hmm. it is and then, and then you go to their next audition for every one thing you get there's a million things that you didn't get um when i for the first time i went in for playboy i did a newsstand special and then i did a i did a i didn't even want to do it <laughs> and then it was like a test like they were oh maybe she'll be a, a bunny and i took you know we did this little little pictures and I do remember I went in to talk to this. She's dead now, thank God. But a um, horrible woman named Marilyn. And she, she ever watched Thundercats? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Remember Mum Ra? Yeah. That's what this bitch looked like. I'm mean, not even <laughs> Holy shit. This was, That's yeah, terrifying. She lived for a while. So I didn't even know what she looked like when she was actually super old. Um, but I came in and I was like, oh, okay, I've been to, again, because it's been like weeks. My friend that worked the, at Playboy was like, your picture is still on the wall. I'm like, okay, sweet. And so I go in and I'm like, okay, this is a piece of cake. Because at that time, everything I went in for, I was just getting, or at least the right. every other thing. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. And man, she was like, first of all, baby fat. You've got to get rid of it. Fix your fucking teeth. And that's exactly how she said it. Wow. Do something with your eyebrows. Don't make that face. You need to do something with your hair. You need a boob job. Yeah. She just went down the list of what was wrong with me. And I think I was, I mean, was I even 21? Wow. Oh, God damn. It's like, you need to not be you. <laughs> yeah, and I just, I, I was crushed, obviously. Mm -hmm. Ego was just torn. And yeah, it was really, I, I took it really hard, I think only because I was so young. Because when you're that young, you know, you, everything's a big deal. Right. Um, then, you know, cut to, I did Wedding Crashers and a few other things. And so I got off, they we called my manager and they would like to put her in for a celebrity pictorial and then it was it was like you know three times the amount of claim i get so i was like my big not fuck you to hef i don't have any problems with, i never had any problems with hef I, but just the corporation right yeah because it was just i was i don't know i just thought it was funny it's like so now you're paying me more but right. the funny thing is is had i had i done the playmate thing in the beginning i really wouldn't have had anything to, not to prove, but I wouldn't have worked so hard to do other stuff. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. They actually did me an amazing favor and then sure. had to pay me three times the amount because the shitty way that I was treated motivated me to do, to work harder. And so I was That's like, it's good that you took it as motivation. You know what I mean? Some people don't. Uh, yeah. I mean, I definitely am like a product of the eighties and nineties where, right everything's shitty and you just it is what right. it is right. you know what i mean like we didn't get to stick a crystal up our ass like this will be better now it's like no nope, things are shitty very <laughs> shitty tomorrow but guess what you still gotta do it so yeah oh, do you yeah. think do you think that prepared you for stand-up because i know that like um i know as a musician and then i um i lived with two uh stand-up comics for uh, a few years in new york mm -hmm. and it was one of the best experiences ever but it's it's a similar thing where like when you're on stage, if people don't like what you're doing, it can be really easy to be like, oh, they don't like you because you're you're kind of putting yourself out there. You're not you're not playing a character. You're not, you know, you're you're giving them your thoughts, your thing. As a musician, I'm giving them my thoughts and song, all that kind of stuff. So it's really easy if they don't like something to be like, 
they don't like me. I'm awful, you know? Um, mm. Do you think that you were prepared for that or do you even take it like that? Is that even something that you think about? Well, I, I mean, God bless all these younger generation kids that think they just, there's rainbows and sunshine coming out of their ass. But I mean, I, I honestly will do something that I worked really hard on and I, I'm okay with it, but then mm -hmm. I, I still pick everything apart. Like, yeah. like that wasn't even something Hollywood did to me. Like I just have always been like that. I always think everything's shit. Right. Um, when I'm on stage, I'm very present. So I'm having a great time. When I have a great time, I notice other people have a good time. When there are, so there cute. have been times when I just didn't want to do the show because I was tired right. or somebody pissed me off, you know, off stage or something like that. And that's when, oh, this is weird. I mean, there's always those things and there's low energy in the room mm -hmm. because either the host sucks or someone bombed before you, or they're just, the, sometimes the audience is shy. Um, I have noticed like sometimes there's not an audible laugh. I feel bad because I, I just, they're with me though. Like that, as long as I see in their eyes that they're with me and nobody does this, I'm like, oh, they hate me. Um, <laughs> I've never really, I mean, I've definitely bombed, don't get me wrong, but I have not uh, experienced where at least a few people in the work room weren't with me. Mm -hmm. And then everyone who isn't with me, they can check out mentally. It's cool. I'm, for, I'm with you. Right, yeah, you get the, you get the yeah. one and it's like, all right, it's yeah. me and you. It's me it's and you tonight. Me. <laughs> me and you. I yeah. I was really lucky to when I first started. I would ask my. Uh, I've been friends with Tom Green forever, so I he's really helped me with a lot of stuff. And he was like, "You need to go, and you need to smile. <laughs> people don't look at the floor, nice. and you need to find preferably women, three people, and you make eye contact and you say hi to them, like you actually know them almost." And, um, and it's true, like almost nine times out of 10, those people, because you've, you've included them, they do yeah. feel a little bit special and they're with you. And, yep. uh, well, they work for you. They feel like there's a connection. So they're like, it works oh, out. yeah, it mine. works yeah. out. It works out. Um, knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> same, same thing for yeah. singing. Same thing. We, for, we, we yeah, actually, yeah, we, yeah. we, we just went to a show with like, we, we covered a show and, and one of the opening acts, um, <clears throat> we were kind of talking to him a little bit and we, we hit it off and then we saw him perform and we were kind of like, Ew. and right. he came, <laughs> he came up to us afterwards and, and I legit, like, he, he was like, dude, what do you think? And I was like, Oh no. you, you look at the floor the whole time. Like just, just pick one or two people out. That's yeah. all you gotta do. Yeah. Pick a couple people out. People loved it. But you gotta you gotta love it yourself and and right if if you if you look like it makes all the difference time, in the world if you yeah. look like you're bored everybody's gonna be bored but like like you said like if you're having a good time that's what's infectious if you're enjoying yourself then other yeah. people are gonna start enjoying themselves with you and that's what you're looking for anything a anyway you know what I mean like who are the people that get my humor that I could talk in a room with cool everyone else can fuck off but I got you guys and so yeah. it's we're gonna so have a party tonight. It works. Yeah, I think he was telling me, he's like, you guys are all, you new kids are all really hypersensitive of where the mic stand is. And I was like, right. I know there's nobody. You guys say, how are you guys doing? You're looking at the floor and you fiddle with them. You have not looked, you're talking for 30 seconds. You have not looked at one person. And then you look up and then you're like, oh, nobody's excited to be here. Because <laughs> you're looking at the floor and fucking with the mic. Right. So, yeah, I try not to fuck with the mic too much. I didn't know what it is about the mic. It's like a safety blanket or something. I do notice that my my peers really love to. They it's like they jack off the mic while they're talking and like leave it right, alone. Right. It's gonna break. <laughs> they try to hide behind it. You try and get smaller behind a mic. Yeah, stand and it's like it's not. It's you're not it's gonna still there. It's still there. They're all yeah. still, still there. there. Yeah, I try not to do that. I notice I do this a lot. Yeah. Like I'm like I gotta. Yeah, Shoulders up, hold the mic. Yeah. I'm like, I get real. <laughs> that's why. That's why you need one of those headsets. Oh God! Like I'm Instinct doing a headset. motivational speech. Exactly. You're, Absolutely. You're, just, you're telling talk. pyramid schemes. It's just your TED, TED talk. talk. You can you can give them the guns. <laughs> Do you guys know? I'm taking a class for that. Are you really? Speaker. Yeah. 
Oh, that's. I figured it's no different than a clean set. <laughs> so <laughs> equally is entertaining. No, you're you're right. I exactly. feel like it's the same. You know what I mean? It's like just pick, but it has to be on like one topic. It's like one really long topic, um, and it's a clean set basically. If you could, if you sense. could do, if you had to do your TED talk, like what's what's a thing that you could talk about forever that you don't get a chance to talk about forever that you can be like, here's my opinion on this that everybody needs to know. And that's what I'm trying to figure out because uh, the, the 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 assignments was what do you wish you knew? What do you wish someone had told you that you had to learn the hard way? That's, that's, that's like, gotcha, a, gotcha. that's a thing. And then when you will probably write two or three things and then you'll figure out which one you're more passionate and that'll be your topic. And then apparently you have 20 minutes to an hour of your topic and then people just pay you to go. Yap. Right. Right. So I was like, how many can't things this be stand up? Can Why can't this be stand up? <laughs> <laughs> How many things uh, do you have? Any topics that you could talk for twenty minutes or more about? That's one topic. Um, God, right now my head is only full of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. It's really like <laughs> it's pretty it's hilarious. On a loop. It's amazing. Yeah. It's on pretty amazing. A fucking loop. I can't get enough of it. It's it's. Uh, I think my boyfriend's happy that I'm just not talking about like my friends I don't like. He's like, oh, at least it's, if I hear one more thing about this girl, he's like, at least it's people that we don't actually have to Let's see. Let's talk more about Johnny Depp. Yeah. Yeah. Um, How gosh. hilarious he is in court. Yeah. It's just, I, I think, um, I think when I started doing, doing my, I wrote all I wrote, I wrote one line and it, 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 it is what it is. So I think, because some people think when you say it is what it is that, it's being flipped like you don't give a fuck. I think it is what it is. Is it's either or, but either or is the same thing because it doesn't matter. Like, right? You know, you're you have to accept and you move on. Right. This is you what know? you're in. No matter how you feel about it, you have it, to you're make still it work. In it. Yeah. You have mm -hmm. to make it work. It's not this person's fault. You can only blame your parents up till twenty five. After that, <laughs> it's fucking your own. Stuff. <laughs> That's that's probably how it's going to be. A lot of cussing, a lot of rude. See, that's your TED talk right there, though. You can only yeah. blame your parents till twenty five. Yeah, you can't blame. It. It's nobody else's fault. Like it really is it. And even even um, you know, I'm doing I'm doing a lot of therapy, um, but mostly because I'm unfortunately the 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 shitty part about doing stand up is because you're you're constantly having an opinion about things. Mm -hmm. And you allow yourself to have an opinion that is not always the most popular opinion or it turns into a rant or you just, you know, it's like the shittiest thing you could say, right. but unfortunately, like it's not helpful in your, for an actual person because it's very <laughs> negative. So yeah, I noticed, I noticed that, um, it did. I didn't have an off switch. Like I literally was just like, and just, <laughs> and just <laughs> saying something shitty about almost everything. And then like, um, and then I noticed everyone was not everyone, but at least ninety percent of people were um, getting on my fucking last nerve. <laughs> my last. I'm like, like who the fuck raised you? Just I'm like, because I'm just hyper aware to everything. This is also right, why I got yeah. back to the medication because I'm on my ADD medications. I'm like, stop. You just need to tune out other people. <laughs> so, I literally like, am I on a, a hidden camera show? Like you can't be that dumb. Like it was like that. It was turning into oh, that. I, I, was surprised. Totally I, feel like that. I was oh seeing it. Yeah. So yeah. does, does ADD way. medication help that? Because I might need some. Yeah. Cause I, yeah. And you mind your own business more. You def I mean, I do. I don't know. I think other, it, it affects people differently. Yeah. I am much more calm, um, not nearly as high strung, mainly because I just stick to my tasks at hand. Um, yes. Yeah, I just kind of like, or if someone's talking or doing something, I just kind of like let it happen. Whereas before I really, because I have all these thoughts and then I'll right. like, yeah. jump did, out of my Did you mouth find yourself... Did you find yourself like, was that something that you could 
tune out when it was around you, but it was, when it was like someone you were interacting with, it was too much. Cause I find myself sometimes like I'll literally be somewhere and my brain will just make me go like, what did you just say to that person? <laughs> <laughs> like, and I, I'm like, I'm sorry, but this is the, like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever fucking heard. What's uh, you need to walk me through this. And I, like, I find myself trying really hard to not do that. And yeah. You know, <laughs> Were yeah. you were you able to like could you focus on just your shit or were you having that? Were you like Bef you before or you mean yeah, once I before. started taking well before I couldn't concentrate on anything. Right. The only thing that I could concentrate on was stand up when I was on stage. Okay. It's really funny because uh I, I know that you're supposed to go and like hang out in the green. I don't like to. Uh, and it's not because I don't like my other fellow comedian. I, I kind of cruise. I'm like, hey, and then I, I, I always, you always can't find me. Um, it's because I've noticed some comedians, even people that have been doing it forever, they have a lot of nervous energy mm -hmm. and I pick up on it. And so it makes me feel weird. Mm -hmm. And then, so I'm like, oh, I don't want to be around any of your weird energy. Not that you're, I mean, you're entitled to your own nervous energy, but I don't, yeah. I don't do that. Like, I don't, I don't have to before i go on i just you just you just go yeah just go on yeah. stage you do your job and by the same thing like i i don't go oh i killed you'll never hear me say that <laughs> <laughs> but i say they didn't yeah. throw fruit <laughs> that's my <laughs> um i'll say i like the audience but i will right. never say i killed because i think it's like Wow, well, that's. I think yeah. it's the douchiest thing you could possibly come out of. Yes, that. yeah, I was, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Someone else say it for you. You can't say it about yourself because it's like, ugh, you just say yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and even if somebody else says it about you, it's like, shut up. Yeah, and then you go no, <laughs> when you your, you know, or say thank you, but like, you right? Just, yeah, this is a weird thing to do. But um, I don't. When people, oh my god, that was amazing, or or. If, I mean, like a fellow comic or friend or something like that, and I'm like, you know, I don't think we need it give ourselves trophies because we, they, they laughed and clapped. Like that's our job. Right. We did our job. That, yeah, that's yeah. it. Like we did yeah. our job in a story. Like, you know, no other job gets applause anyway. So the ones you get are more than. Yeah. Those. So, I mean, I, I think, I know maybe that's also part, part of the um, imposter syndrome maybe right, i'm right. going to sit and like enjoy people giving me a compliment but usually i'm like mm, no you did we did our job and, yeah. uh, and do you, then, before you do a set do you do you so you don't hang out in the green room do you go somewhere by do you need to go by yourself somewhere or do you like hang out in the crowd and watch everybody else and there's kind of pop up yeah sometimes if uh, sometimes i'll watch from the crowd um it's always good just in case god forbid somebody says something that you say Normally, right. yeah, yeah. or you can do a callback or something. Um, sometimes I'll sit in the green, but I don't really, I try not to interact with people too much just because everyone's always in their own head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what other people's uh, process is. So mm -hmm. I know for me that uh, I always get asked to like drive people. Will you drive me? I'm like, oh. And I'll. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll do it. I'll do it if I have to. But for the most part, I don't like to talk to a living soul right. two hours before a show. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not doing anything special. I'm chilling. I'm, you know, hanging out with my cat or whatever. I really don't like to, or in, in the car ride, like, I like silence. <laughs> Find your cue. <laughs> I just, or yeah. like, song i just like to play some music and veg out and not think about it. I just it's more of a mood thing oh, I just, a vibe and that way when i go in i'm like and i might because i'm naturally very even though i have add i'm still very naturally low energy mm -hmm. when i talk um so uh you know i don't want people to mistake that for i'm not happy to be here so i have to kind of just get in my own little zone which means i don't want to talk to anybody and so if i have someone in the car yip yapping my ear off it's like, oh my god, can you just fucking shut up? And then you have your ear off when you go along. Like, oh my god, I'm going to kill myself. Yeah. Um, especially if that person didn't do well, and they're like, oh my god, the crowd sucked. I'm like, no, it was you. It was one thousand percent you. Do you tell him? <laughs> yeah. Do you tell him? I have. I am. Um, I have told one person that they weren't prepared. Okay. 
I we use uh we you use, were there. So I up there. So I huh? up there. there. Yeah, that's what we use. <laughs> well, she asked. So I, I was like, well, you want my honest answer? <laughs> Great um, jacket. <laughs> like that. Yeah, right. Awesome jacket. I really liked it. Yeah. We we uh interesting set choice. <laughs> Oh God! If I did that, there'd be a fight. <laughs> <laughs> I I got I gotta say, like the your whole like the whole thing about like getting to a show and stuff. For me too, it's it's the same process where it's just like I'm going to a show. I'm trying to get into a headspace. I don't care. Yeah, like, whatever you're telling me. Yeah, I, I don't care. Unless but it's unless to a show. It's making my life better. Please just don't talk to me. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, but even like even that too, just like any kind of other things that are going to get you out of that headspace uh -huh. space of that, you know, 25, 30, 45, 60 minutes that you're up there is just like, I don't, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I, don't, I, I can't really deal with it right now. Well, yeah, because it's, it's so you're giving, you're, you're literally like spending so much energy. Right. Yeah. And you seem, you so. seem kind of, you seem kind of empathic already like from what you're talking about <laughs> like you can read people and yeah you can I, read their energies and stuff like that and i'm yeah. gonna say oh, i recently stopped talking to a few people because their energy was just like i like them like your energy is just off i don't know what it is and i don't even yeah. know. like i was like what do i ghost or do i say something i don't know what right, to right. do like it's such a California thing to say. So the vibe is off. It wasn't what it was. So <laughs> it's true. Though. It, it's um, so true, though. You have you have certain you have certain people, and for whatever reason, it's like it's always a certain kind of vibe when they're around. And 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 if you're trying to do something that doesn't work with that, you have to be like, I can't like can't deal need, with this. We need to schedule time together because I need to. Yeah. My time is needs to be away from your time or even just like you know you always trust your guy this is something i didn't do when i was younger because i would always just go okay i was mm -hmm. okay I, I was a great person to hang out with when i was in my 20s everything i was a fuck yeah kind of girl it's like fuck yeah right. i'll do anything yeah, let's do this let's do that and now it, it's like i i i never really learned how to set boundaries so it's, okay. it's a problem yeah. now and so now it's like I think them in my head. I just don't say them out of my mouth. And it's because I don't know if I'm going to, when I say it, is this person, am I going to say, it, is the, is it rude? Right. Um, and I think it's just the era I grew up in where, especially being female, like, what do you tell little girls? Be a good, be a good little girl. Be quiet. That's usually yeah. the two things. And so we do that. And then we end up, as adults, not people told really dumb things to little girls. <laughs> oh no, right? It's the stupidest yeah, thing. Right? Really dumb things. Get married at, at, at 16, oh, 18. Yeah. He's mean to you because he likes you. Oh, that one. The fucking wor what? Right. worst. The worst. The worst. My like, mom, my mom, you the married thing. The why buy the cow when you get the milk for free? Right, I've been right. married three fucking times. I'm like, thank you, mom. That's what your fucked up mentality did. Every time. <laughs> That this guy wanted to see me <laughs> further. I'd be like, God, man, me first. And like, dude. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. That's I've never funny. lived with a man that I didn't marry. Okay. That okay. was the thing. Like, I won't live with you. You have to marry me. And then like three, three marriages. I'm like, why can't I learn to just live in sin? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should live together. I got to try this out. <laughs> I got to tell you that that's the first thing. Like I, I, like, like people who who are in relationships and stuff like that. Like I, I've been married for almost eleven years now. Yeah, and together for like sixteen, and uh, they're always like, "So, so, like, you actually seem happy. What do you, what do you do?" And I was like, "I lived with her first because there's no secrets. <laughs> there's no secrets when you live with them for a year. Everything's off the table. Yeah, yeah. everybody poops. Right? Don't do, you know? Yeah. You learn those little like." Mm, I don't know if I can live with that. Maybe <laughs> I can, maybe I can deal with that. And that, that, that's what you learn. After these messages, we'll be right back. This episode of Bacon is my podcast is brought to you by drinkwildbills.com and growyourassoff.com. 
Use promo code BACON to get 10% off your entire order. Yeah. Uh, grilling season is never over. And you always want to quench your thirst. And why not do it with some craft-made beverages by yeah, the, Wild Bills? The two work together pretty awesome. Yeah. Agreed. So go ahead. Hit them up. Check it out. It helps them, which are awesome companies, and it helps us. It helps us, and it helps you. And it helps you to because you like live del- a more flavorful life. You like delicious things in your mouth. Indeed. So do go it. do it now. Do it. Okay. Okay. I'm Malia. Hey, I'm Kyle. And we're from Glacier Veins, and you can check out our album, Lunar Reflection, online wherever you listen to music. And you've been consuming Bacon is my podcast. Your first year of living together. You saved a lot of money, I'm sure. Well, well, I, I, I mean. Save yeah. a lot of time, I guess. Well, time. time, too. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Well, time, I'm, time not, I'm not married, so I don't know. But I, but I do live. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> um, so, so bringing it back to comedy, um, you talked about you're you're going to be performing in the round. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. We have a round here, and and what he was talking about is, yeah, it is a place called um, Westbury Music Fair, mm-hmm. or no, what is it now? Um, uh, I don't know what it is now, but it was the Westbury Music Theater when I played there. It's uh, I don't know what it is, but. What's what's really cool? I actually saw I, I've seen a lot of musical acts on there, but I also saw Lewis Black there, and um, it's a round that actually rotates. Yeah. While now, you're playing, it doesn't go all the way around. Performing. It like it goes a certain distance like and play. then goes back. Yeah, yeah, it goes yeah. Back the other way. Now I will say that is um, that helps that you're not having to walk around. But I almost wish that I did have to do that because it was really weird because if you're thing. if you're the type of person and like mm-hmm. you said like you find a couple people to make eye contact with right so you find your people that are in the audience yeah. well you find your people in the audience and then the next time you turn around they're not where you <laughs> left them and you look there and it's like someone new and it's like you're a stranger i don't fucking know you we don't have a connection yet we don't even have anything so it's really it's really weird at first and jarring because it also moves so slow. Yeah, this one it's, did. It's it's a few, which it's, is a good thing. I didn't want it. I was at first. I was like, how fast does this go? I'm like getting bored again. Right. It's <laughs> it's, it's legit. Like it's probably about a like if you're measuring, it's probably like a foot a minute. Yeah, yeah, probably something like that. It takes you about a forty five degree angle and then another one. So I, I'll say like it's it's good that yours isn't moving because that's a weird experience because again, you're not controlling it. You don't feel it. And everybody that's dead set in front of you is now somebody different the next time you look around. And then like that you have those cool moments where you're like, hey, it's you again. Hey, all right. We're back. You know, and then they're gone again. Um, but it is it is an interesting experience to kind of like have that because everywhere you look, there's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, as as a as a band and everything, your the, the mindset is always like, uh, you know, and I I've never played big, huge arenas, theaters, anything like that. This was a, a decent sized one, but it's kind of like there are no cheap seats, so you want to yeah. make sure that like, okay, you're somewhere over here, and you and, and like you think your seat sucks. I'm gonna come be in your face and make sure that your seat doesn't suck. Nice. Um, yeah. so if you can do that, that's a really cool kind of thing because you can have these moments with people that are, it's different. It's different because yeah. everywhere you look now, usually you look to your left, or your right, and you're off stage, right? Yeah. Or there's, there's someone waiting to come on or there's something mm-hmm. happening, but now it's like to your left and right, there's people there. And so everywhere you kind of look, it kind of feels cool. Cause it feels like you're in this, you know, if you like being in the spotlight, then it's it's cool because you're there and you also get to kind of be like oh cool we can have a moment over here and we can have a yeah. moment over here and i can walk around so i had a lot of fun with it i thought it was really cool after getting over that initial like this is weird kind of feeling yeah so i think you're gonna dig it i think it, I, I think you're gonna fun. have fun yeah yeah hopefully the photographer won't get my double chin but <laughs> <laughs> well that's what i mean make sure and just walk around give everybody a good shot <laughs> 
Well, I've never, I've never told them this before. You know, they're only going to print the bad ones anyway. I know, right? <laughs> my eyes closed. That's, that's all it is. I've, I've never told them this, but my, my first concert was there at the West Bank Music Fair. Oh, nice. Who did you see? Uh, I saw, I saw um, John Denver. Oh, wow. Nice. When the yeah. fuck was that? When that's was pretty that? cool. Yeah. It was, was a long that? time ago. How old were you? Uh, I was, Four? I was yeah. young. <laughs> I was young. I was pretty young. My sister was born, so it wasn't okay. that young. But yeah, I was. I was pretty. We're old too. Like I know you see. Oh, I'm old. I'm old. We're pretty old too. So don't don't. I'm worry. not old, but like the world is Hollywood. <laughs> uh, we're, we're old for music too. We're old for music like, yeah. too. So don't. Say it's we're doing a podcast because we're too old. Because we're too old to make it. <laughs> right. We can be we too do. old for music though. Nah, I don't think you're too old for anything if you're good. Yeah. At it. Agreed. Just try and keep getting good at it. Yeah. Someday we'll be good at it and we'll be all right. But I, I didn't I see like because because he's my friend, I don't want to be like, yeah, my first concert was at the place that you played the a couple years ago. <laughs> like that was super cool of you. My first concert was there. That just makes me feel old. Yeah, well <laughs> you are older than I am. Uh and I'm gonna remind him every yeah. single time. Whatever. For sure. Whatever. Um so real quick. Before we move forward, we do have to make a quick break for well, we're moving our sponsor. In, into this, yeah, we have sponsors, Rachel. Oh, amazing! We hashtag have, we professional. Have, hashtag professional, and and <laughs> that sponsor is a company called Poddex. And what Poddex is is a, a fun little company that helps budding podcasters, people who um, who need a little bit of extra oomph when it comes to breaking the ice yeah. uh perhaps don't have the verbal diarrhea that we do a little shy um so what what they do is they they make these decks right uh -huh. and within these decks are 50 cards and within each card is a question a nugget of truth <laughs> that they're, they're just yearning to pull out from somebody so this way they can break the ice and create a better conversation I love how long this this gets longer every time. I've 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 had a lot of time to think about this. <laughs> I love this. So what we like to do is have our guest pick one deck, and then we'll have you pick a random question from that deck. So okay. the decks we have from you to pick from are as follows. It's exhausting. <laughs> we have the interview deck. We have the interview deck too. We've got the episode deck. We've got. Would you rather? We've got what the heck? We've got the fun and new, pretty sweet branded what the fuck deck. Old school Ooh. MTV branding. And then we also have my favorite. Yes. How dare you? Yes. Yeah, like if you say if you want to pick that one, you do have to say it that yeah, way. You gotta give it some if oof. you don't say it that way, I'm gonna it. ask you what again. You can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> so Rachel, uh which which one of those decks would you like? Which one popped from? out to you? Uh um I've already forgotten all of them. Um <laughs> what's I really am fond of would you rather? Would you rather it is? Yeah. That is that is legit one of the one of the popular ones. Yeah, it's a good yeah. one. Everybody likes that one. So yeah. Mike is gonna shuffle, and while Mike shuffles, I'll just let everybody within the sound of my voice know that you can go to poddex.com where you can check out these decks as well as any other new ones that they come out with. They periodically come out with new ones. They also have an app that has a bunch of different topics that you can grab questions from as well. If you decide to grab any of the decks or any of their sweet merch, mm -hmm. you can use the promo code BACON. Because everything is better with bacon. And you can get 10% off your entire order. Hashtag professional. Uh, I almost threw them off. That's okay. I can't shuffle at all. So you are already awesome. Ahead of the game. Yes. All right, Rachel. So... I am going to take the finger of power and I am going to go from my left to my right, your right to your left, and you tell me when to stop and you will get a random question. Stop. Stopping right there. I can feel it. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm scared. Would you rather, and this is this is full time, would you rather your voice 
forever sound like Elmo or Kermit the Frog? Oh, fuck. Oh, you totally got a PG one. It's nice. Elmo. I feel like I could still get late if my voice sounded like Elmo. Kermit would work. No, I'm, I'm going to say no. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm that thinking nasally I'm back at the throat, Kermit. I'm totally think Ray Romano. Right no. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Like, uh, yeah, I'm just thinking from the other side. Is uh, uh, like for me, I was like, oh, Kermit for sure. Right. Like if I if I showed up, it, like to my wife and be like, hey, <laughs> just like no way, wouldn't happen. Right. Yeah. She'd like get out. <laughs> yeah, she's like, mm, yeah. She'd go, Shh, hey. Shh. Let's keep that mouth shut. <laughs> it might happen. You're doing a lot of this. I need more of it. <laughs> that that might happen. I, might not. I mean, she. I think she'd probably kick me out. <laughs> Could you imagine? What if, what if you were in a fight? How would you even fight like that? You couldn't. I couldn't oh, right? fight that. I you know, like if you were in an, like a, a discussion, a disagreement, an argument, whatever you want to. How would you rap battle? battle? I mean, I don't get in. I don't get in a lot of rap battles. I don't get in a lot of rap battles. But um, if I did, I would hate to have the voice of either Kermit or Elmo. Or would I? Would I love that? Would that oh, be dude. an automatic win? I, I got to tell you, if you could do a rap battle in the voice of Kermit, you would. You would absolutely win. <laughs> it would have to be tell, really. It would tell have me to be the slowest. It'd be the slowest rap battle ever because his voice is just like hi ho. It's yeah, so... but but you know what? Slick Rick made a, a, a an amazing career on you, slow rap. You are not wrong. <laughs> All right. All right. So Rachel says saying. Elmo. You say Kermit. I think I'd go Elmo also. Because I'm I like I almost I do Elmo at shows already because I'm always like, hey. So I'm always yeah, you, you, I always got some stuff. So so for his thing, his thing for shows is he he takes his drink and he goes, Oh, hey! now you guys are it. hold on. Oh, what just happened? I don't know what happened. Now I can't hear you. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. That's because that's you did the Elmo voice. See what happened? You destroyed everything. You just brought everything down. That's weird. I didn't bring it down. I don't know. I can't I don't hear know. a fucking thing you're saying. We can we can <laughs> hear you just fine. Um, how do we fix this? We have hit a snag. Well, did I touch everyone. it? Now am I back? Say something. Are you back? You're here. Speak to me. We are speaking. We're speaking. I'm speaking. I'm talking as much as I can. There's nothing. There is nothing we can do. Take take the so go like this. Um, go like this. <laughs> Just take the, the laptop thing. Go like this. Hey. Hey. They have to keep talking. Hello, We're talking. Hello. Hi. <laughs> nothing. Do you hmm. have headphones? We should also How can we, we should do, How can this, we do this just so now we know there's a call. thing. Uh, hmm. Oh, he, yeah, she got the earbuds. She got the earbuds. See if those will work. I wonder if your earbuds has a. Is it working? Because if are they, those working? If they don't at all. That could be why. Anything? Nothing. No, nothing. Huh. I wonder what's happened. Huh. We can this hear is you. riveting for everyone watching, I'm sure. It's fantastic. We're all super excited. <laughs> oh, now I can you got hear us. Oh, oh now hey. I can. so weird. I don't know. I can fantastic. We can hear you as well. We can hear you. Okay. okay. All right. So hey, we'll just do means... this until, until this doesn't work again. <laughs> We're back. We're back. Uh, so what he does, what he does with his band is he takes his drink and then he goes, Hey! And everybody does that. Yeah, I That's did it. His thing. I did it once. Thing. I did it once to cheers the audience, and then I was just being a sarcastic asshole because that's what I am. Okay. And they all did it back, and so I was like, "Oh, I'll do it again." And then they all did it back again, and then I was like, "I'm gonna see how many times this works," and it never doesn't. So, so now uh, it's a thing. Now it's, it's a thing. thing. Now, now it's, it's a thing. thing. It's the now worst it's thing, thing in the world. You've copied it. <laughs> yeah, you've heard me. Yeah, you've outright stolen it. I've done it. I've done it at shows you beforehand. You've pilfered it. No, no, no. Well, okay. So, <laughs> so a little backstory. Jim is a headliner. Yes. I'm so an opening stupid. act. Always in forever. This is not. 
And um, I mean, like, yeah, sure. I've been on a bill and played last. Never been the headline. We've all played last. Uh, and and you know, I've done the I've done the the hey! and mocked him. Hmm. I'm often mocked. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and you know what's funny? It's still, it, it works. It's all right. It works. I hate it. It's all right. I hate it. So. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, we do know that you are a uh, a Jameson connoisseur. Although not today. Fan. not today. Not today. today. Not, you got shit to do. You got things to do. It's yeah. still early in LA. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to here in New York. Though we are. We will wrap up soon. Don't worry. I know no, it's okay. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but yeah, we, so you've got an alter ego. Yeah. Um, yeah. and it, it, its name is Jamie. It's, I love how you say it's. <laughs> well, you, you know what? Jen, it's Jen, my wife, she's, she's it's got, fun. she's got an alter ego and, and, and she calls it Penny. And, and she's told me I have an alter ego and mm -hmm. its name is Miguel. Miguel. Yeah, Miguel. apparently I'm better at sex. Miguel. Oh my. Um, and Miguel is Miguel is a sexual a sexual being, huh? Yeah. Apparently. Wow. I am I am that Jimmy to a lot of uh friends' wives. Yeah, that's not a good thing. I, yeah, I've heard that. No, that wasn't a good thing. <laughs> uh, are, you, are you going out with that Jimmy? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Which is which is great because you've been that Jimmy to uh to to Jen mm -hmm. before. And um, so, so does does Jamie become that Jamie at all, <laughs> or is it just like Jamie? do you get all your friends in trouble, or are you just no. uh, self destructive? Neither, I'm neither. I'm just nicer. Oh, nice! I'm so just, I'm just uh... much more outgoing. Um, like when when the pandemic happened and we all had to be inside, I was like, sweet. Um, Me too. Us yeah, too. I mean, I, I just. <laughs> It's just it's just the anxiety. I, I just have a yeah. lot of anxiety. So like humans, sometimes I just I have to like whew, gotta talk to humans today. Um, mm -hmm. But I have to put, mentally prepare for it. So when going to like you, I I almost never will. If someone goes, oh, we're going to a club. I'm like, is it 2004? I'm like, why the fuck would I want to go to a club? <laughs> um, like a comedy they, club? They could have um, said a rave. Mm, nah. We're going to a rave. Mm. Should I put on my Zubaz? I mean, I do <laughs> love I, I do love music festivals, but like just anything where I'm just like, ugh, human beings. It's just like right. it's really not fun for me. Or you know, a house party, God forbid. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Lord. <laughs> do you, do you have, cause like I have, I, I have a lot of anxiety when it comes to being in a group of people. I hate being surrounded hate by people. Uh, if I'm, if I'm in a bar, I have to like, my back has to be against a wall or the bar or something. Cause I just, I start to really kind of like, I lose my shit a little bit. Yeah. I get really, I get hyper like, Ugh, I get yeah. quickly. I like also, in front of people is never a problem. Never. It's never a problem. Or if, um, you know, that's why I don't like house parties or where people, people love to stand in a circle with their mm. fucked up little drink and talk about nothing important. And I'm like, I hate that. Yeah, I'm just cold. Cool. Um, <laughs> why are we doing this? Can we go over here and like sit our fat asses down? Is that something we can do? Like, right. I, I, I don't mind like a dinner table because then it's like you can talk to the person next to you or something. Yeah, right. okay. yeah. It changes everything. It is so weird to me. I do not like it. Um, the only and it, it, it's just like oh, Jameson. And so like I normally have some. I'm I'm much more conscious of it now. Like to. But my resting bitch face usually. So I'll try to like at least like I don't I'm like, is this how humans do it? I don't know how they do it. Um, <laughs> um so like species. Oh, yeah, <laughs> time, you know, and uh I just or, or or like when I I get stuck talking to the women and they're like talking about their fucking kids or their mega careers or I don't know, just shit I can't relate to or just you know, even like housewifery. And I'm like, I don't know. Okay. I'm just like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm going to kill myself. Okay, cool. Um, 
don't give a fuck. Um, and then <laughs> it's just really weird. Um, I'm getting better. But then given a couple Jamesons, I'm actually very nice. And I'll be like, if, they're, if we're in a bar situation, I think, where, where was I? I was at Rock and Raleigh, Riley's. Rock and Riley's. Okay. It's an Irish pub. They have their own whiskey. And I went with uh, my neighbor, who was a friend of my ex-husband, we were still married at the time, and uh, we just w we went to the bar, and I had just like I was already crying, like I don't want to go, I'm like just come on, just one drink, I'll buy you food, man. Okay, so then I go, <laughs> and I'm just you know, obviously the drinks came before the food, so I was like drunk a little bit. Jamie had already come out after like two drinks at that point, and I was like, oh, do you need a? Dr I was just like openly just talking to randos, just random right. people. And my other friend is, is also there. And she's like, what's with Rachel? And she's like, oh, no, that's Jamie now. Jamie's nice. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is not Rachel. Rachel would just pull that person and go fuck themselves. <laughs> that's great. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rachel's super fun. Uh, Rachel likes to sing and dance, participate in things. Uh, Jamie does rather. Rachel is like, nah, I'm good. I'm just gonna say here. <laughs> was was Rachel was Rachel a part of uh, Sugarbush or was that Jamie? What? Um, I I heard you had a, a dance crew called uh, Sugarbush. No, it wasn't that. It was oh, Sugar. I don't know. You didn't have a. I uh, maybe that's a different. Oh, you know what? It was I, blush. That's a different. It was what? It was blush, but I did do the Pussycat Dolls, and actually, I did. Yeah. well, I know you did Pussycat okay. Dolls, yeah, I didn't. and I, I maybe I got the name wrong, but I, I was listening to a podcast or reading interview with you where you said that you were doing something where you I were tried doing I tried. a little dance group with your friends. Yeah, I tried. I got models. <laughs> what was that mistake? I got like really pretty <laughs> models. <laughs> And tried to teach them like like we'll just do these little things and like it was great because at the time I had all these connections with like no not really big designers or anything but uh, you know the people that would give us like like create okay. things and like we I never bought anything for the group um, and it was kind of like fashion type thing and there's a, I'm just gonna say I'm not saying all models can't dance but um, this did not go well. <laughs> Um, anything happening in unison was a problem. Space accounting <laughs> was a problem. As long as you can turn left. As long uh, as you can turn I had left. one girl who was just the cutest thing, but she was just all legs. She was just all legs. So like, she couldn't, she's like, I don't know how, like, how do you, <laughs> we're using this chair. You know, the, chair. You know, the little chair, the cabaret chair dance and the girls. Right, right. Do. Her legs were so long. It was like, she had a hobbit chair. You know what I mean? She was just, she was just like, it just was not, it was very awkward. Um, Cause they're supposed to like lean back on the chair and I'm tiny. So I'm short. So just for me, it's quite easy. The, floors right there it's just you just do it she was so long that it was just like there was no way to balance it because she's like i don't know how to i'm just like <laughs> it was just yeah because she like her off to for her to do her arm this it was a long way for her so, yeah. there like was so off long. center off center teeter-totter yeah it's very weird <laughs> it was kind of yeah it was kind of yeah i was just like yeah this is bullshit um yeah that was a I think we did like a few things. We did like a couple like charity events and like, I don't know. They'll let anyone do anything at Fashion Week in LA. It doesn't really count. That <laughs> they do the same thing in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Same, they do. Yeah. Same, same shit. New York is, it, it's become less of a like, hey, I want to do that. And it's like, mm, okay, fine. Yeah, sure. Just do whatever. You, you got likes. You got so we're going to. We're going to start kind of wrapping this up. So we'll do a couple like faster questions and then we'll just let you go because you've been super awesome with your time. Thank you so much. It's been fun. And uh, all the things you've said about like being a, uh, a like a when you talk, you're not animated. You definitely are. So yeah. we appreciate it very much. And oh, uh, you, don't, you, you don't have resting bitch face either. You've been fine. So Okay, cool. You haven't. You haven't. <laughs> I, I haven't I'm once. Scowling, been like, my scowling. The Botox has worn off. So I'm like. Oh. <laughs> I, I have not once been like she's hating us. She's okay, 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 okay. and I've we've had those we've shows. We've had those shows. We've had those shows. We've had that before. No. It's been like, oh man, this is we've going had, so wrong. We've you're we, like we had the the seven questions, and we went right into the episode, and we were like, oh, this is gonna be brutal. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. 
and he liked us a lot. But 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 it ended up happening that yeah yeah he liked us a lot. He stayed longer. So what like a hostile yeah. witness on the news on the on the stand. You're just like yeah <laughs> right yeah. Feels sometimes it feels like that. Sometimes. Is it? <laughs> but this has been awesome. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. So I just wanted to ask you a few things. One, I read that you're a foodie, but you're like a trash panda foodie. You like all like uh, totally trashy food. And I wanted to know if you could describe to non-Texans, what exactly is a Frito pie? Oh, it's fucking amazing. It's amazingness. <laughs> but it's, um, well, okay. So the way my aunt makes it is it's, literally a pie crust of crushed mm -hmm. fritos mm -hmm. so, awesome and then there's salty crunchy she does layers it. like some people just throw chili in there she does this like layeredness to it so there's like a different consistency each okay so layer. what what's what's in it because i had um we played south by southwest and we were at a, a club and they had a frito they called it a frito pie and what i got was a styrofoam bowl Mm. with Fritos in the bottom mm. and some no bean chili mm. thrown on top of that with some mm. cheese and onions, which was delicious. I mean, that's, I'm all about that's it. essentially what it is. Like I, I noticed like a food truck situation will give you like literally a bag of Fritos. They cut it and they just put everything. Inside uh, yeah. I've seen that too. Again. I've seen that too. Um, have you ever seen like when you go to the grocery store, there's like the party dip. And there's the layers of the beans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of looks like that. So it's like a casserole it. situation. A casserole situation. Okay. With Fritos on the top, in the center, and on the nice. The so we got we got Fritos. Yeah. We got chili. Yeah. Cheese, Cheese onions, beans. Like it's just, yeah. I mean, I think there was one where there was like the bottom layer was was um like refried beans and then everything else was on top. And then the top part had like a chili situation, but like a hearty chili, not a runny one. Right. Okay. And then, okay. And then Fritos and then cheese. Nice. So, but when you cut it, when you cut it, it looks like a big old mess. So it's not like, yeah, well, right. It doesn't come out like it's, a, it's, like a yeah. it's lasagna. Yeah. 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 But it's it not a really square good. when you take it out. It's no, I wish it was. Um, it fills whatever, yeah. Vessel you're holding. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the beans, you, you brought up beans, you brought up chili. So the chili itself, does it have beans or no? Yeah. Oh, the chili itself has beans and then it's not and like, meat. like a. And meat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's got everything. Okay. We're, we're garbage Thank foodies you. too. So we're, yeah, we, yeah. we're all about this. I need this to know. I need to know these things. Call it our need to know. <laughs> yeah. Probably because we'll try and make it. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I Absolutely. mean, yeah, I've, I've, I'm pretty, it's pretty easy for me. Like when I used to, there was a point where I used to go on the road a lot for appearances mm -hmm. and I had my assistant with me and you know, you'd go, to, I mean, I do love really nice food too, but I love all food, but like <laughs> he was, in, he was, his responsibility was just making me not cranky because I had to get on a plane and go somewhere else the next day. Right. And so he would call them ahead of time to make sure that it's something was open or he'd at least get me food when I got home. And he was so happy because I eat, I eat like a five-year-old because I, if I, if someone would make me just butter with noodles and if you're sassy, throw in some peas, I was content and I would eat it. And I would butter just noodles are great. Wow. Yeah. I, and he was like, butter you eat like a five-year-old. <laughs> butter noodles are great. Throw some Parmesan in there and you've got, you've got party. Whew. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm pretty. What's, I'm pretty easy. What's your uh, like? Okay, if it's your if it's your guaranteed to to make you not cranky food, what is it? If there's oh, one shit. thing, um, fuck. There's so many things I like. Um, <laughs> and there's things that I've eaten. I've actually said, if I'm bitchy, give me this. Um. I'm really fond of Thanksgiving. Not the not the holiday, just the food. Just the, the food. Holiday. Yeah, I think the holiday is bullshit. But um, yeah, I'm you don't celebrate of, genocide with a turkey. I know. It's like, ooh, it's kind of, like I think it's funny. I'm someone's getting <laughs> mad at me. I'm going to say something shitty. But <laughs> nah, we're like, good. Remember in the beginning of 
well, the lockdown or whatever you want to call it, when everyone yeah. was educating themselves. Right, right. All the white people decided to read a book. Right, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, where have you been your whole life? Like, are you fucking right. serious? Like, How you did you suddenly? Know this? You didn't know this from four years old? Like, I'm pretty sure. Or even Thanksgiving when people are like, oh, did you know? I'm Christopher like, Columbus? I'm like, bitch, I know. kind of a dick. I I've known yeah. this since I was seven. I'm like. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, do any reading weird. growing up? All right. Like, did you There's do the lines. turkey thing? Like the, you know, okay. The syphilis with the blankets. No, you didn't know what that. Okay, cool. Uh, That's what I bring up every year. I'm like, hey. <laughs> well, I ruin everything. Small I ruin pox every blankets. Holiday. You're doing smallpox blankets? Yeah. Um, That's our white elephant gift. Wasn't it even exchanged? Smallpox, syphilis. Absolutely. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gift that keeps on giving. Indeed. I'll be back in a month to sweep up this land. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, yeah. I was but the food of Thanksgiving is delicious. What's so? Do you like turkey? Like, I love Thanksgiving food except turkey. I hate turkey. Uh, you I gotta throw it. You gotta throw, you? Yeah, you gotta throw it into like a sandwich. Okay. Thanksgiving food sandwich, or my cousin used to take like all of the Thanksgiving food. The stuffing, the mashed potatoes, the the cranberry sauce, the the turkey, put it into a ball. <laughs> what? Egg it. What? S -s -s slow down. <laughs> Egg it. Put it in breadcrumbs and deep fry it. Ugh. And they oh, call wow. it Thanksgiving balls, and you dip it into gravy. Ugh. Oh, wow. It is fucking awesome. Oh wow. I don't. I don't know if I'm down with that, but. Well, I, I would try it. You try. I'm it. fond anyway. of. Um, I really love Yorkshire pudding. You know what mm. that is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, there, and so you know, my ex was Australian, so we'd always make them, and so I used to like to because they have the little hole. Yeah. So then I we'd get them, and I would just like fill it up with mashed potatoes, and then shred shred the turkey. I just kind of make Thanksgiving, but it was kind of like, it's like a Sunday, but it's Thanksgiving like a food. savory ice cream cone. Yeah. Like. It was amazing. So it's like Sounds awesome. Favorite. Yeah. I'm in. I remember when he broke up, he made me a whole bunch and put them in the freezer. <laughs> that is a, like, that that is a nice, like, that's a solid, solid breakup. That is a solid breakup. Oh yeah. I'm the best ex ever. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty if amazing. I, if you could ever amazing. wish for an ex, it'd be me. Like I'm the best at being an ex. <laughs> I've seen amazing. I've seen exes that uh, would not have made me food. Yeah, yeah they probably throw a lot of arsenic. Out. <laughs> Here, take this food. No, I, thank I was you. more of a I like I like the the Thanksgiving the, the ham. I was more of a fan of the ham. That's the tur that's a, than that's the, a than the turkey. Yeah, that's Easter. Yeah, that's Easter. Yeah, it's zombie Jesus. Uh, zombie day. Jesus eggs day. Yeah, I, yeah, I got that one too. But no, yeah, we always did that. We always did a ham. Like my my parents would do a turkey and a ham, even though we didn't have huge Thanksgivings. It was kind of just us. But I would always go for a ham. Family. I always thought that was pretty pretty amazing. That was cool. my that was my go to. Nice. Yeah. All right. And the mashed potatoes. So uh, Rachel, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Thank you yes. for hanging out. Um, before we sign off here. Please let everybody know where they can find all things you and all things your comedy. And all. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, uh, so my Instagram are Sterling Comedy, and I post all my all my adventures and where I'm going and stuff on my website. So it's rachelsterling.rocks. Um, and that's it. Like, yeah, pretty. And I, I I will say, uh, she's she hustles. She Absolutely. she does a <laughs> lot of sets. She does a lot of reps in a lot of places. So there's a lot of new content always coming up, which yeah. is really cool because you, you scroll across the Instagram and you're like, oh, cool. And there's like a nice minute video. <laughs> and go see comedy shows, people. People need to laugh. Yeah. Please, people need to laugh more. Just... Stop, stop fucking with comics. Agreed. Everybody, stop fucking with comics. Let I think we're going to see a turnaround. I think I think we're going to see a revolt where, people, where comics just won't I, care anymore. I think so, too. I think we're going to yeah. hit that point where it's going to be like, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck it. That's going to happen. Yeah. Funny and is I, funny. I welcome it. I go for it. Yeah, it's comedy, man. It's either 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 it's either it's all off limits and don't watch comedy 
or everything's game and just let yeah. it go. I agree. Just fucking deal with it. I agree. So uh, everybody go check out Rachel. Go check out her stuff. She's awesome. If you can see her live, go see her live. But in- go see her live at the Rainbow Room. Yeah. yeah. I love yeah. the Rainbow Room. May I've 3rd, been to the Rainbow Room. Rainbow Room. It's happening. Is it May 3rd? <sighs> I might be a liar. Ooh. I don't know. Ooh. 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 Let me see. I sat at Lemmy's chair. I have chair. something on the third, and it's not. You know what? The third. The third is the third. I'm at the Bourbon Room in Hollywood. Um, so go there. I'm a big fat liar. The um, the Rainbow Room is May fifteenth, and um, Supernova is May eighteenth. Nice. And the Rainbow Room's awesome. I sat at Lemmy's chair, and I ordered a Jack and Coke, and I had one, and I played the game. It was amazing. Nice. It's amazing. Nice. That's amazing. That was my favorite place to hang out when I was in LA. I um, loved it. Absolutely loved it. Uh, go see her. Go check out. Support stand-up comedy. Please, please, please support stand-up comedy. Uh, they are the truth tellers. Indeed. Of the earth. Let it happen. Rachel, thanks for hanging out with us. We really do appreciate it. Thanks for it. inviting me. Sorry I couldn't join you in the I'm just drinking water, but <laughs> that's okay. Next next time. Next, next time, time. Once you're once you're on the show, you're part Can't of the family. Through. You're always welcome back. You're always welcome here. If you have anything else to promote, always let us know. We'll always promote for you. We'll oh, thank help. you. So thank you and thank you everybody for listening. And remember, if you are listening every day to just ask yourself, what is it? that makes your life better? What is it that makes everything you do better? What is it that makes the things more fun? What is it that makes everything that you like in life a little bit tastier? Hey, Rachel, we know you love tests. What's the most important question? Remember the test we talked about? <laughs> she does it. At the very beginning. It was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. What's your bacon? What's your bacon? She has ADD. It's okay. I do. <laughs> <laughs> What's your bacon? Thanks, guys. Thanks for hanging out. It's cool. <sighs> we dismounted. Dismounted, indeed. Her words. That's what she, she said. She was like, oh, we're dismounting. That's what she said. I like that. I like that. I want to use that. We can use that. <laughs> I want to use that from now on. I'd be like, we're now going to dismount. We're going to we're gonna dismount now. Yeah. Um, speaking of dismounting. Why don't you uh, sh- tell them how to mount up on some uh, something heavy? Something heavy can be found on all streaming platforms as well as on social media. Social media is at something heavy music. There's there's no point. There's no point. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's at right. something heavy music. Uh, you can hear us on the Spotify. It's the instagrams mm. we're even we're on instagram if you want to ask to add us to a story please do yeah please please definitely it's do. a good thing definitely do uh me personally you can find me at me my own self mike i have a whole bunch of different things on there i've got the podcast i've got my music i've got my kids i also have things from things that we're doing yeah uh we do a stuff. little a little thing that we do called Bacon is my passion. Yes. We do music. It's we're gonna be doing things. more music. We are. And uh we kinda like we hit a thing where we're just like, uh, ah, you know what? Let's just do like this. And I hope we catch you by surprise. Yeah, me too. At some point. Because I, I, I do think that's the direction we're, we're, we, take. we might have to uh release all the other stuff under under a different name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I think so. Maybe bring back the TDC. Yeah, those who know know. If you know, you know. Um, so yeah, check out Bacon's My Passion. Yeah, uh, Jim Z. What about yourself? Mm, and well, your things. My things. I mean, my thing, uh, which is just me personally, not me, my own self, but just me. Uh, Jimmy G's shoes. So it's me and and my shoes, and I have lots of shoes. Yeah, uh, you've got more than I do. I have so many. I love shoes. I love shoes. Send me pictures of your shoes. I like them. Not your feet. That, don't be gross. But send me pictures of your shoes. Uh, your feet don't even have to be in them. It doesn't matter. Agreed. But Jimmy G Shoes on all the socials. You can find me there. And my band, Craving Strange. You can find us at cravingstrange.net. And at that dot net. You can find all of our socials and all of our stuff and everything we have going on. Shows, releases, all that kind of cool stuff. 
Um, Mike mentioned mm. Bacon is My Passion. You can find that as well as Bacon is My Podcast at baconismypodcast.com where you can find every episode of this show that we've done. All of them. Plus, you can find our... Uh, it's nearly your 100. You can find our clothing line, Bacon is My Fashion. Yeah. Check out our clothing line. We are fashionistas. Uh, you can also find links to all of our sponsors with all of our promo codes and everything. So save yourself some money. You don't have to remember it, all that kind of stuff. If you don't remember what we said at the beginning of the episode, just be like, ah, I got to bake it my podcast.com. Go to the sponsor page. You'll get it. Do it. Right? We got blogs. We got stuff. Check out our Patreon if you really want to help us out because there... You can get some extra episodes, live streams, extra music from us, uh, information a little bit quicker. We even do some like cooking shows, some tasting stuff, all that some kind of stuff. Streams. Definitely check it out. Um, Patreon.com slash bacon is my podcast. Uh, that's all the that's all the stuff for you to check out. So if you've been listening this far, thank you so much. We do appreciate you. We appreciate it every time. Thanks for listening. Stay in the conversation with hashtag What's Your Bacon? Hashtag Bacon is my pod. Hashtag Bacon is my podcast. And don't forget to ask yourself every single day what is the thing that makes life better what is the thing that makes the things that you like better what is the thing that makes all the stuff that you dig a little bit tastier five star reviews on bacon is my podcast and ask yourself what's your bacon cool i gotta remember the